Kremlin, Lenin's tomb, the famous Red Square. Good evening from Moscow, I'm John Doherty. The incredible journey of 11-year-old Samantha Smith is over. The schoolgirl from Manchester, Maine, spent two very hectic weeks touring the Soviet Union at the invitation of Soviet President Yuri Andropov. And that invitation tonight is where our story begins. Until late April, Samantha lived the life of a normal fifth grader in Manchester, Maine. She did, however, have a hobby that led to some major changes in her life. She wrote letters to famous people, her latest to Soviet President Yuri Andropov. Samantha expressed her concerns about nuclear war and what she perceived as the Soviets' desire to conquer the world. In April, she received her reply directly from Andropov. He wrote that no one in his beautiful country wanted war, and he assured Samantha that the Soviet Union would not be the first country to use nuclear weapons. And then he issued an invitation to Samantha and her family to visit the USSR. That letter transformed Samantha into an instant celebrity. There were interviews to be given. A crew from Soviet television appeared in Manchester to bring word back to their country of this American schoolgirl who'd caught the attention of their leader. Then on July 7th, Samantha and her mother and father, Jane and Art Smith, left Augusta for the start of their journey. And along the way, they began to get an idea of the increasing media attention. In Boston, there were dozens of reporters as the family passed through Logan Airport. During the flight to Montreal, Samantha caught a quick nap, but even then, there were cameras. But it was at Montreal's Dorval Airport that the real crunch occurred. Canadian and American reporters and photographers eager to get a picture, some word, from this young girl taking her message of peace to the Soviets. Royal Canadian Mounted Police escorted the Smith safely to a waiting car for a tour of the city and then to Mirabel Airport and the flight to Moscow. Samantha's arrival in Moscow was the start of her VIP treatment by the Soviet government. She was met by three high-ranking members of the Soviet Foreign Ministry who were to stay with her and her parents throughout their tour. But it was only minutes later that the group was also met by the media, and there is no more aggressive press corps than the Soviets. Samantha and company were taken from the airport to their hotel by chauffeur-driven limousine, a form of transportation they were to become accustomed to. Friday evening in Moscow gave Samantha a chance to enjoy one of the oldest forms of entertainment in the Soviet Union, the puppet theater. The state central academic puppet theater is the oldest in the country, providing special performances for children and adults. Each door is open. And just before the show was to begin, the cock crowed, and a pre-show performance began in the big clock outside the theater. <laughs> and then inside for the main performance, which took on new meaning this time. The story told was that of two kings, upset over a mountain which separated the kingdoms, so they knocked it down. The theme was not lost on a schoolgirl from Maine trying to knock down a similar mountain. Saturday began with an introduction for Samantha to the fallen heroes of the Soviet Union. She and her parents placed flowers on the tomb of the unknown soldier. There was also a visit to Lenin's tomb. After more visits to the grave sites of Soviet heroes, Samantha was taken inside the Kremlin walls to Lenin's study, and our camera was allowed to follow her. It was the first time that American television cameras were allowed into what the Soviets consider a sacred place. Samantha remained politely attentive during a somber introduction to a country trying to impress her. After leaving the study, there were visits to the basilicas near Red Square.
It was during this first part of Samantha's tour that we began to realize just how important news coverage of the event was to the Soviets. The members of the press sector of the foreign ministry who accompanied us could not have been more accommodating. And Soviet television had already started daily coverage of Samantha's travel. Saturday afternoon, our first visit to Moscow was over. We would return later in the tour. It was now on to the Crimea, and for Samantha, the highlight of her visit to the Soviet Union. We'll be back with Samantha's visit to the Camp of the Young Pioneers at Artek after this.